So this morning, House on the Rock, I want you to kindly rise up on your feet. Let's make warmly welcome to House on the Rock, a seasoned teacher and preacher of God's word, and a servant son in this house, Pastor Petrock Sadik, as he brings us God's word. Come on, let's appreciate him. Hallelujah. Help me shake someone on your left and on your right. Tell them I'm grateful you're standing next to me. Hallelujah. I have three major grateful privileges in my life. Born into an Islamic home, number one major privilege in my life is that I have an encounter with Jesus Christ. Such an awesome privilege because some people are born and have never had the privilege of having an encounter. But thank God I did. My second privilege, I think God gave me the best wife in the world. The privilege marrying that woman is amazing. She is amazing. The third privilege in my life is God gave me a father. The ability to be called the son of Pastor Paul at day for us. Such honor, such privilege. If you love Pastor Paul like I love Pastor Paul, if you know your privilege to be called into his house, I want us to celebrate his grace and celebrate our mama also. And we pray that the hand of God will be upon their life as they spread the gospel of Jesus everywhere. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I have a brief message for us and I believe that God is going to bless somebody's life tonight. Amen and amen. You know someone said this is not night, this is morning. Tonight is a preacher's language. Amen. <laughs> we always say tonight. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bible, let's look at the book of John, the Apostle John the writings of the Apostle John, the third division of the writings of the Apostle John. Verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth so is everyone that is born of the spirit Whew, I feel something come on now I want you to squeeze somebody's hand and tell them I'm supernatural <laughs> I want you to look for 12 disciples and tell them I'm supernatural. I'm supernatural. I'm supernatural. I'm super natural. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Thank you for this honor. I do not make light of it. I'm grateful, Daddy. Thank you. 
I'm super natural. I stand amazed in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. I stand amazed in your presence. There is joy, peace, and hope. There's no one like you, Yahweh. There's no one like you in all the earth. There's no one like you, Yahweh. There's no one like you. You do. You do. Your own. <laughs> Woo! You do. Oh, you do. The Bible telling us in the book of John that the man that is born of the Spirit is like a wind. You cannot predict him. You don't have what it takes to control him. He said you don't know where he's coming from. You don't even know where he's going. When the wind blows, you cannot predict. And he says, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. This is the reality of our lives. We are unpredictable. Now, that doesn't sit well with an intellectual mind because an intellectual mind loves to predict everything. That's what the purpose of science is. Science is to explain everything. So if you try to understand the things of the spirit with an intellectual mind, you're going to miss God. You cannot understand God by an intellectual mind. God surpasses your intellect. Because science tries to explain everything and anything that science cannot explain science says it does not exist the unpredictability of God how can God change and yet not change <laughs> hallelujah it's also a very strong mountain to the religious mind because the religious mind does not like anything that is unpredictable why because religion is about control yes they don't they don't want anything that is not they would love to have a predictable god where we face this direction then he will answer our prayers if you face this other direction he will not answer our prayers if you if you pray all night then he will answer your prayer but if you pray one second he will not answer your prayer because religion is the ability to control men and god so we put they put god in a box a box of rituals so that if you fulfill that rituals then god will answer your prayers but if you don't fulfill the rituals then god will not respond to you but you see you cannot understand God through a religious mentality it's not possible the Bible says God is past finding out the only way you can reach to the things of the spirit and the things of God is through a spiritual faith attitude you've got to believe to see <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the Lord Somebody say, I'm going to see today. Hallelujah. Let's go to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Let me show us some scriptures. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. I, I don't know if they'll project it, but if, if, if they won't, so because of my time. Okay. Let's first Corinthians. Sorry, it says, But to the natural mind, 
it is impossible to grasp the things of the spirit for the things of the spirit are spiritually discerned but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god for the are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned you see i have seen people argue about the things of the spirit based on their intellectual prowess and their religious mentality because they think that um, God should be predictable. He should be predictable. We should be able to cage him and if we can't cage him, then it's not true. But you see, being born again is not something that can be explained to an intellectual mind. Even a religious mind, because of religion, we have limited the teachings of being born again. We try to add to the salvation that we have already received from God. And the salvation of God is total. It's complete. God did not save a part of you. He saved all of you. He didn't save a part of your life. He saved all of your life. It is called soteria. Soteria meaning complete salvation. Healing, deliverance, miracles, signs, wonders, past, present, future. All of you is complete. You see, this is the message of salvation. If it is not complete, it is not salvation at all. The born again life is an indestructible life. I dare to say to you, if you're born again, it is impossible for you to fail. It's impossible because you are carrying a DNA mandabo supernatural DNA your blood is not the same your body is not the same your flesh is not the same you are not even the same the moment you give your life to Christ something supernatural took place the moment Christ comes into your spirit, your life has changed. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23. The Bible says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. That means I was given birth to, not from the seed of my father. Hallelujah. Not from the seed of my mother. I was given birth to by the seed of God. You know, sometimes I go back to my family. My father is a Muslim. My brothers and, uh, and, and sisters are Muslims. I'm from Borno State and goes our local government where Boko Haram was trying. You know, sometimes I get back home and I look at them and I'm wondering, did I come from here? <laughs> because see what God has made of my life. Let's look at our scripture from the message translation. Let's look at it. it. The message translation explains it deeper. It said, now that you have cleaned up your lives by following the truth, love one another as if your lives depend on it. Your new life is not like your old life. Your old birth came from mortal sperm. Ooh. Ooh. Your new birth comes from God's living word. Continue. Just think somebody say just think a life conceived by God himself that's why the prophet said the old life is a grass life its beauty as short-lived as wild flowers grass dries up flowers droop God's word goes on and on forever this is the word that conceived the new life in you Praise the name of the Lord. Tell somebody I'm different. Look at somebody say I'm supernatural. For there's an atmosphere when nothing is impossible and no disease incurable. There's an atmosphere. For there's an atmosphere when nothing is impossible and no disease incurable there's an atmosphere in the atmosphere of jesus 
atmosphere of Jesus, atmosphere of Jesus. In the atmosphere of Jesus, atmosphere of Jesus, atmosphere of Jesus. Mando so pataya baraba. For there's an atmosphere where nothing is impossible and no disease incurable. There's an atmosphere. There's an atmosphere where nothing is impossible and no disease incurable. There's an atmosphere. <laughs> Woo! In the atmosphere of Jesus, atmosphere of Jesus, atmosphere of Jesus. Listen, I bring the atmosphere of Jesus, atmosphere of Jesus, atmosphere of Jesus. In the atmosphere of Jesus, atmosphere of Jesus, atmosphere. Of Jesus. What does it mean to be born again? What does it mean to be born again? Hallelujah. How many of us want to know? Say, I want to know. <laughs> I'll show you. The first thing we have to know about being born again is that being born again is not a change of character. <laughs> you say, now that you're born again, change your ways. No, that's, <laughs> that's an insult to the things that God has done. Being born again is not a change of character. It's a change of nature. Because you can't change a man's character that his nature has not changed. Even God cannot change Satan with all of his faith. He's condemned. So, it's not that now that you're born again, you change your ways. No, 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 no. That's not what being born again is. You see, you don't, you don't walk righteousness the nature of righteousness was injected in you. It was given to you as a gift. For all I've seen and come short of the glory of God. But you see, the gift of God is eternal life. It was given as a gift. You didn't work for it. Romans 5 verse 17. Let's look at that scripture. It said, but now as the offense... Go to verse 17, just straight to 17. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which received abundance of grace and of the gift of what? Righteousness. Righteousness is a gift into your spirit. Shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. You see, God had precepts, God has principles, God has um, dictates. You cannot fulfill those dictates with your old nature. It was impossible for you to do it. This is the prophecy in the book of Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19, he says, And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give them a heart of flesh. Verse 20 now says, That they may walk in my status. Look at that. The change of nature compels us to walk in righteousness. You could not walk in righteousness except you were given the nature of righteousness. And keep my ordinances and do them that they shall be my people and I will be their God. This is the miracle that took place when you gave your life to Jesus Christ. So being born again is not a change of character. It's a change of nature. Hallelujah. Being born again it's not about 
demand and request where we come to God and we make a lot of demand and requests. No. Being born again is about receiving. Only. Ooh. <laughs> you don't make demands and requests. When you are born again, you receive. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, who has, who has, past tense, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the spiritual realm, in the heavenly places, in Christ. You see, he has already blessed you. I give you another scripture. And his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Praise the name of the Lord. He has given us how many things? Say, I have all things. Come on, somebody shout, I have all things. Listen, even your prosperity is received. It's received. You can work hard and hard and not get prosperity. Because the Bible says the blessing of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. The Amplified says and no toiling is in it. No toiling. It's not about hard work. It's about grace work. I said it's not about hard work. It's about grace work. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. That ye through his poverty might be rich how do you get into that level but you know the grace of our lord jesus christ is in knowing the grace i said it's not about hard work it's about grace work come on slap somebody and tell the person i'm rich tell the person sitting next to you, you say if you know me you'll buy me a Range Rover sport car. Hey, but if you know me, if you know me, do it with a little bit of pride in your eyes. Say, if you know me, you'll take me to lunch. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo. Praise the name of the Lord. I love Jesus. Somebody say that. When I started ministry, I used to struggle. Struggle. I used to try to please people. I would stand on the poop and mm, God is going to bless your life. Pastor Paul delivered me. He started teaching about grace. I said, oh, I need to find out what this thing means. And the moment I got into it, I got drunk. I'm drunk. Hallelujah. So now, I, I, if you don't like me, I preached well. You like me, I preached well. You don't like my style, I preached well. Hallelujah. Because I found out that God is pleased with me. If God is pleased with you, whose opinion matters? Somebody give a lot of shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So, do you know, I can stand in one place and you'll still be blessed. Because it's not about my efforts. It's Christ in me. The hope of glory. Listen, being born again is not an upgraded human life. No. No. That's not what being born again is like. Your human life has been upgraded. See, let, let me tell you something. There's a life of a goat. There's a life of a chicken. There's a life of a frog. There's a life of a human being. Then there's a life of a born again believer. It's not the same life. It's not the same life. We don't have the same life with a normal human being that has not given his life to Christ. That is why the prosperity of the sinner does not move me. He's a walking dead. I'm a resurrected being. Listen, there are, there are people that sing this song. Every living soul, praise the Lord. I'm not a living soul. 
Genesis 2 verse 7. You will be because you'll be laughing at that. We are not living souls. Pastor Paul has been telling us these things. He says, And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Somebody say man became a living soul. Oh, okay now. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45. Oh, praise God. Woo. Look at it. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a what? A quickening spirit. Oh, somebody didn't get that. You're not an ordinary man. You're not the same person from your village. Something supernatural has taken place in your life. Somebody under the sound of my voice. You function under resurrection power. Anywhere you go, you carry life. The Bible says they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall... It is not the upgrade of a human life. It is a total replacement with the God life. Woo. That's why I can be speaking now. Somebody up there is getting healed. Somebody at the back is getting delivered. Somebody's marriage is getting fixed. Why? The words that I speak, they are not ordinary words. When men speak, they speak enticing words of men's wisdom. But when I speak, there's a demonstration of power and of spirit that takes place in an atmosphere. You think I'm ordinary. The Bible says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If you know that you are a quickening spirit, lift up your voice and give the Lord a shout. The covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Hey! Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. You never leave me. <laughs> You said that you won't forsake me. You live inside me, and that is all that matters. The sun won't smite me, and the moon it will not hurt me. Woo! The flood will sweep me. The Lord is my anchor. Say you are the covenant. Say you are. <laughs> somebody say amen. amen. Look for somebody's trouble. Tell them I'm supernatural. I am. Being born again. It's not an upgrade of human life. It's a total replacement with the God life. It is. You either understand it or you don't. Because the kingdom of God functions by understanding. That's how you get results in the kingdom of God. You don't get results by trial. You don't, get, you don't try in this kingdom. If you try, you fail. You must know. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. When you are trying, you see, when you start trying prayer, just know that that prayer has not succeeded yet. Is already a failure because in this kingdom we we stand on understanding understanding meaning that there's something under you you stand upon that's what it means to understand the bible says they know not neither do they understand they walk on in darkness all the foundations of the earth are out of course i have said ye are gods and all of you are the children of the most high you see being born again it's not about ownership it's about stewardship 
So when you are born again, your entire life belongs to God. Everything about you. You no longer own anything. You see, ownership makes us depressed. Because you feel, I've not owned something. I don't have something. It brings about the spirit of depression. This is the reason why people steal. This is the reason why people kill. This is the reason why people rob. They want to own. When you come into God's kingdom, he doesn't make us owners. He makes us stewards. This is the mistake of the prodigal son. He was living in opulence and wealth, but he needed to own. So he told his father, give me mine. I want to own it. The moment he left God's presence and started working with an ownership mentality, his life began to hit the rocks. In this kingdom, we don't own. Your car is not yours. Your house is not yours. It is an avenue to serve God. Do you know your Facebook status is not yours? It belongs to Jesus. Everything about you belongs to Jesus. It, you see, the Bible says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The worlds and those that dwell therein. Everything about God belongs to you belongs everything about you belongs to god you know there was one particular day uh, one of my daughters came to meet me in church and said pastor eh, since you're preaching grace is it is it is it a sin for us to have tattoo <laughs> i said no it's, it's not a sin but have you asked the owner of the body she said huh i, I said have you asked him she said I, I own my body i said you think you do but you don't she said i do own my body i said no listen now know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost so so you cannot dictate what your body wants it's my body I'll have 16 rings it's not a sin but ask the owner <laughs> praise the name of the Lord he owns you all of you your bank account Hallelujah. If it's not in your presence, if it's not from your hands, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. Don't let me have it. Because everything I need is in you. It's in you, it's in you, everything I need is in you, it's in you, it's in you, Lord Jesus, everything I need is in you. You're all I have <laughs> There's no other option There's no plan B You're everything to me You're all I have There's no other option There's no plan B Hallelujah You're everything to me You're everything to me. Being born again is not about serving God. It's not. It's about God serving you. That's the essence of being born again. Giving God an opportunity to serve you. To bless you. To use you. To bless lives through you. You see, this is the essence of being born again. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7 he says for we know this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of it may be of who? of God every treasure in you 
may be of who? Of God. So when they are playing the keyboard, Jesus is playing the keyboard. When he's playing the drums, Jesus is playing the drums. When you stand to sing, Jesus is the one standing to sing. So I can easily say, Jesus is blessing you right now. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Because you see, it's not about you serving God. You will struggle if you try to serve God. But it's about God serving you, walking through you, reaching out to the community through you, reaching out to your co workers through you. It's Jesus, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I receive. Being born again. I, I hope we're learning. I know I'm trying to summarize everything that daddy has said. Has been teaching us lately. You see, when you're born again, your prayer life changes. You don't struggle to please God in the place of prayer. Do you know that the most powerful prayer, guess what the most powerful prayer is? The most powerful prayer is thank you. Let's have a powerful prayer meeting. <laughs> right, right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling us. Let's have a powerful prayer meeting. Is he okay? Are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three, go. <laughs> you see, that's how Paul prayed every time. Thanks be to God right thanks be to god who always causes us to triumph in christ listen jesus stood in an impossible situation where they were giving him only two loaves and five fishes or oh yeah two loaves and five fishes and he needed to feed a multitude the bible says he took it broke it and he did what he gave thanks he gave thanks he gave thanks he gave thanks he didn't go past elete bate bratozopo Listen, Jesus stood in front of Lazarus' grave. It was a dead man, dead for four days. And the Bible says, this is the words he used. He said, Father, I thank you because you have always heard me. Let's do it again. Are you ready to give God the most powerful prayer? Are we ready? Everywhere, are we ready? All right. Who sent you? All right, can we do it together? One, two, three, go. Yeah. Hallelujah. My God is indescribable, and His name is hallowed in the firmaments. He's the Passover lamb through space and time. Jesus is indescribable. His name is hallowed in the firmaments. He's the Passover lamb through space and time. And from the chambers of my heart, let my worship begin but never end to the God of all flesh. For he's my God. And his name is I have some very few minutes Amen You see it's easier to preach in grace <laughs> Than to preach with skill Grace is my skill <laughs> Hallelujah You, you, you think it's easy to stand on this pulpit? This particular pulpit is not... Have you not noticed I left it? <laughs> I left it behind. Because I cannot stand in daddy's shoes. No way. No way. Hallelujah. I've not even gone there yet. Praise God. So even if I've forgotten some things in my notes, it's forgotten. You're blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, I have some few minutes. Being born again is not fighting and battling with demonic forces. Listen, this is very important because a lot of you will be like, they are following me from my village. 
Nothing is following me from my own village. <laughs> it's a consistent victorious life over demonic influence. That's what being born again is. It's a consistent victorious life over demonic influence. Consistent. There's never a time a born again believer will be outwitted by a demonic spirit. Even if you just got born again today, that's why I'm teaching you this so that you can understand it. Hallelujah. Having spoiled principalities and powers, Christ made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. Listen, we are seated in heavenly places in Christ. That's why I pity those people that don't want to receive the life of Jesus Christ. I just I wonder how you are living. You can't have joy outside of Jesus. The Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Mark 16 verse 17. Let me tell you what follows you. You want to know what follows you? Uh, yes. The Bible says goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. <laughs> Look at this. And these signs shall I, oh, 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 are you looking at what is following you? This sign shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out. That devil, does he have S? So you will not say, they've removed 16, remain two inside. One name, all devils. I said one name, all devils. One name, one name, one name. Somebody shout Jesus. <laughs> I said shout Jesus. When you shout that name, right now under the sound of my voice, the anointing of the Lord will move mightily. And if there was anything attacking your life and your destiny, whether it's from the village, from your generation, from your bloodline, in your body, in your finances, in your marriage, uh, at the mention of the name of Jesus, the Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Uh, how many of us are ready to shout that name right now? Somebody shout that name! I call you Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> I call you I call you Say it Oh I call you Hey Hey That's who you are I call you I call you Sing it at the mention of your name, at the mention of your name. I call you healer, 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 healer. Hey. I call you healer. Every demonic influence that has tried to limit your life today we sign an eviction notice somebody shout it loud amen. amen listen demons don't just tremble at the name of Jesus they tremble at your presence because you're not in the same class 
I'm in the God class. I'm an associate of the God kind. I'm a distributor of the influence of Jesus Christ. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I'm an, I'm an influence of Jesus Christ. Jesus does not need to come to Rock Cathedral when I'm standing here. He's already here. Jesus does not need to be in my hotel room when I'm in my hotel room. He's already there. He's dwelling on the inside of me. And he's working mightily to fulfill his purpose. Demons tremble at my presence. What a mighty son I am. <laughs> glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything written about me is great. Demons tremble at my presence. What a mighty son I am. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Come on. Everything written about me is great. Now, can I hear you say, I am great, supernatural. I am great. <laughs> How many people are great in today's service? Hey! I, am I am great, mighty in my way. We can do a lot better than that. 